the job losses in Ararat during the early 90s, particularly with regard to the closure of the Aradale Psychiatric Hospital, crushed the town. The elder statesmen gathered for crisis talks. But what could be done when all you've got is a couple of old buildings and an interesting history? Russell Rackinger, who was the executive officer of the Ararat Regional Development Board, explains why it was so important to get tenants for the empty Aradale complex. It was built in 1865, 1866 and occupied and so all through the time it was part of, uh, part of the Ararat uh, site completely and utterly. It was sitting up on the hill, it provided so much for Ararat in the past and the board decided that it must, and it, it, it said it must, we must find something for Aradale and that became a great focus. We wanted to control our own destiny. We weren't going to lay back and let just history roll over the top of us. We were determined to put ourselves, the Ararat region and Ararat itself, uh, back where it rightly should be and kick it and get it, get, and get it going. It took 10 years before that came to fruition in which we actually got somebody into Aradale. The grounds of Aradale now house the Australian College of Wine, building on the region's strong wine growing history. The country town's future lies in its youth, and the establishment of the wine school allows young people to gain qualifications that may well keep them in the district. Sometimes a town needs to look backwards to move forwards, and this is exactly what Ararat did with regard to its Chinese gold rush heritage. Don and Catherine Reynolds were both instrumental in helping establish the Gumsan Chinese Heritage Centre. The idea of building the museum was to have a good relationship with China and we only hope in the future the ties we've got with China will bring tourism to our app. But the main problem is visas. It's very hard to get visas off the Australian government to come over here. Ararat's most surprising success story gives you some idea of the community spirit in the town. Ron Roberts explains how a group of volunteers turned J Ward, an institution for the criminally insane, into a tourist attraction. J Ward was just another one of the government institutions in Ararat that all closed through the late 80s, early 90s. And then suddenly you hear these rumours that that's it, it's going to be bulldozed, it's not going to be there anymore. I think it jerked people into action. They said, hold on, that's 140 years. They can't just bulldoze that. So we set up the Friends of Joe Ward, opened to the public as rank amateurs. We had no idea what we were doing. And in the first weekend, or Easter, we had 4,500 visitors. Now, it didn't take long to realise that this was a place that people wanted to visit. Uh, it developed then into an institution that the, go the government sold to the city of Ararat. The Friends of Joe Ward leased it off the city of Ararat and they continue to run it as they have for the last 11 years, averaging about 12,000 people a year. And it brings in money to the town, tourists to the town, and it gives the town a sense of success. I don't know if there's a, a direct causal relationship, but suddenly the town started to see itself as not as a dumping ground, not as a, a negative all the time, but a success story. And so things started to happen in the town. People started to tidy up their houses, new shops came to the town. And so the group got together, saved Jaywood from demolition, started a tourist attraction and then the town's gone on.